Diabetes in pregnancy is actually a wide spectrum of conditions. There is what's called pre-gestational diabetes. There's a women who are already diabetic before they fall pregnant. And then there's what's called gestational diabetes. There's a woman who first discovered to have um, derangements in their metabolism of glucose during pregnancy. So the pre-gestational diabetic patients are, we are worried about them because they get complications during their pregnancies. And the ones with gestational diabetes, they get problems during pregnancy, but they're also at a higher risk of getting um, diabetes mellitus later on in life. Studies have actually shown that um, if someone has gestational diabetes, it usually resolves once they deliver their baby, but within the next 10 or so years, about 30% of those women are going to be diabetic. 14 years ago, I had my son, 2006. 2007 I conceived, which I had a miscarriage because of high sugars. Uh, 2009 I conceived my daughter. Uh, 20, 2018 I had another stillbirth. And now I'm carrying again. Pregnancy complications can either be to the mother or to the baby. Whenever we've got a pregnant woman, complications can occur to either one of these two patients. So with the mother, what can occur is um, early on, they tend to have miscarriages. If their um, glucose is not well controlled, they tend to have recurrent miscarriages. So you find there are women who come with two, three miscarriages, and then when you then go into it, you actually discover it's because of poor glucose control. Um, they may also tend to have uh, complications that do have during labor and um, delivery and they may end up having cesarean sections done, they can get trauma to their um, uh, genital area during delivery because their babies grow very big and this may complicate the deliveries. Um, for the babies, mo the major thing that happens to them is they become macrosomic which means they are overgrown, they are very big because they're taking lots of glucose from their mother, they're going to have um, overproduction of cells within them so they grow very big. If you find yourself delivering a baby who's over 4 kgs, you need to be worried that there may be an element of poor glucose control during that pregnancy. So besides macrosomia, they can get what we call fetal growth restriction. Um, so you'd find with uh, these uh, babies, they usually grow very big, but they can actually not grow well. Uh, because one of the complications that I didn't mention with the mother is they tend to have hypertensive diseases in pregnancy and they can also get cardiac diseases in pregnancy. So the placental bed itself will be affected by the glucose. They fail to send blood to their babies and their babies don't grow well, which is growth restriction. If it's poorly controlled right on the onset, they can get, particularly in the first eight weeks um, of their pregnancy, if their sugars are not well controlled, they're at a higher risk of getting fetal abnormalities, particularly neural tube develop, uh, disorders, spina bifida, unencephaly, problems with the neural tube, but they can also get cardiovascular complications, they can also get um, gastrointestinal complications. So these babies are at a risk of having malformations, which would then either be um, complicating their lives after delivery, or they may actually not be able to survive after delivery. Once the baby is born, because they've been living in a state of high glucose con levels, once they are delivered, they tend to get hypoglycemic. That means their sugar levels crashes. They tend to become hypocalcemic. They have other uh, micro element complications that can, they can get. And they may also get what we call hyperbilirubinemia, which means they're breaking down their cells very fast. They collect what's called bilirubin and they have a yellow tinge on them, which is mostly noted um, by a, a yellowness in their palms, in their eyes, on their um, tongue, or any other surface that you can actually uh, visualize, they can get um, ye that yellowness. They may also um, complicate in getting respiratory distress. So the lungs of the baby who, whose mother is diabetic, they develop at a slower rate than those of a non-diabetic woman. So if uh, they deliver preterm, they're more likely to get respiratory distress. But even if they are delivered at term, 
chances of getting respiratory distress syndrome are actually very high so they fail to breathe well these babies need oxygen once they are delivered they need support respiratory support once they are delivered so those are the possible complications that they can get the woman may also have what we call polyhydramnios this means the fluid that's around surrounding the baby becomes very excessive so their abdomen distends so much they become uncomfortable but also the baby becomes um, at a risk of not growing well because of this over distension other complications can come up because of that um, they can have what we call pre, uh, pre labor rupture of membranes where this overstretching causes these membranes to rupture and they have a gush of fluid before they get into labor. This can also occur even preterm before the baby becomes mature and you end up, have to end up delivering this baby. They may get infections from that. And when this rupture occurs, they can actually get what we call a placental abruption where the placenta um, shift off from the uterus and it detaches because of the high velocity that's associated with the breaking of the membranes. However, these complications can be prevented. So the first thing is if a woman has got pre-gestational diabetes, that means they're already diabetic before they get pregnant, they need to have what we call a preconception visit. You need to go and see your doctor before you fall pregnant. I know in our culture, most of us, we want to talk about pregnancy once everybody can see we are pregnant, but this group of women, it's important for them to get a preconceptional diabetes uh, uh, visit where you're going to check your glucose levels we do what's called an hbaic glycated hemoglobin it has to be less than 6.5 for you to have a safe pregnancy if it's between 6.5 to 10 you may get a pregnancy but it's more likely going to complicate you're more likely to experience this if your hbaic is greater than 10 don't even try to fall pregnant at that time because you are definitely going to have one complication or the other so that preconception visit is important. It also looks at whether the woman has other complications of diabetes already, such as a nephropathy where the kidneys have already been affected or retinopathy where the eyes have already been affected because this can actually worsen during pregnancy. So you need to have a baseline. You also check the blood pressure as I mentioned, blood pressure uh, is more likely to elevate in pre diabetic pregnancies. So you actually have to have a baseline to see if all is well. And if it's on the elevated side, then they need treatment before they fall pregnant. Once they are pregnant, for those who we say they have gestational diabetes, they need closer follow-up. They need more frequent visits to their um, obstetrician. They need to be seen at a more uh, frequent level. Where others are seen every four weeks, diabetics need to be seen every two weeks. Where others have their first scan later on, diabetics need to have an early on scan. They also need to have an anomaly scan. They need to have fetal growth scans uh, re regularly to follow up the baby and pick up complications early and deal with them early. Anyone can actually get pre-gestational diabetes or gestational diabetes. So there are women who are more likely to get uh, pre-gestational diabetes. These are women who, have, who are obese, who have a family history of diabetes, who have a family member who has had gestational diabetes or if they have had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy. We've had a macrosomic baby, that's a baby greater than 4 kg. Women who have had um, a poor outcome of their pregnancy, who have lost a baby due to stillbirth and we can't actually find out why they had that stillbirth. These are women who are more likely to get gest uh, gestational diabetes than others. So these women need to book early. They need to be screened early so they get a first screening on first contact but they also need another screening for diabetes if the first one was normal they need a repeat screen between 24 to 28 weeks of their pregnancy and this will actually um, pick up who's more likely to have problems and it can actually be controlled once you've controlled your sugar levels you're able to uh, have a close to normal pregnancy and have a close to normal baby mr jackson your wife is um, pregnant and is also diabetic. Uh, what are you doing to support her uh, uh, through this journey to make sure that at least her uh, sugars are uh, maintained around normal? Well, in essence, um, she being my wife and uh, after having two kids, because I think that's when we, she first discovered that she had diabetes was when uh, we had our first child. And uh, the physicians and doctors have always advised that we have to do high um, and strict 
maintenance of the sugar levels. Basically starch is the major sugar driver that's there. So basically you've got to limit your meals. You can eat uh, the same quantity that a normal person would eat throughout the day. But the thing is that you are not supposed to eat um, in high volumes because if you have a, a meal with like sadza, it's better you split it into two meals as opposed to one meal because your sugar then won't spike and the body doesn't get overwhelmed by that sugar. And then also it's just the general mental support that we have for each other to say, hey, food is not everything. Yeah, so it's, it's discipline. You've got to try and get to a point where you're just simply saying that, listen, I've got more important things. My health is important, so we don't uh, overindulge, you know. So um, I think that's basically the support I've been giving her is constantly being there and just watching whatever she, whatever she eats. And that's how we successively had two babies and now we're expecting a third. This is my second born, Annie. She's the one that was 4.1 kgs. My son Joshua is still asleep. No teenage boys, they love to sleep. What I would say to you is that if you are wanting to conceive and you're diabetic, keep your sugars at a low, uh, a low thing because uh, diabetes is not easy. I know how it is. I've had it for the past 14 years. And when you get when you fall pregnant, you don't just eat anything. And another thing you need to take care of is your sugars because if your sugars are perfect, then your pregnancy will be perfect. Eating is not everything. Carrying your baby is everything because miscarriages are painful and it's traumatizing. After strictly controlling her sugars this time, Jamie had a normal pregnancy with no complications and delivered a beautiful baby with no more weight. If someone already has diabetes before pregnancy, they need to continue on their diet. They need to be very strict about their diet. Pregnancy is one of those times where people become a bit negligent on their diet because they're blaming the pregnancy, they're eating for two. But if you're diabetic, you still need to control your glucose levels. You still need to have a diet that is very specific and coordinated. So that is important. It's also important that um, you get your medications adjusted. If you were taking tablets before pregnancy, you may need to have insulin during the pregnancy. If you're taking insulin, your doses may need to be adjusted during pregnancy because pregnancy in itself shifts the way your body breaks down your sugars. So therefore, they need to be adjusted. And these adjustments actually need to be done with each trimester because your needs change per trimester. So the first trimester is different from the second trimester, it's different from the third trimester. So you need actually to have these adjustments done frequently. Um, you need also to maintain that care that you already have for your feet because again in pregnancy you got to have more, more probability of having complications because your body is not in its natural state. So you need to be more careful and be more focused about it. So diet is very important, dose adjustment is very important and general care of your body is also important.